Hi, I'm Pete, and I'm a member of the DaVinci Resolve users group. This is a question that came up from um, a user a couple of days ago. It was about, I've got a video, and I made a mistake, and I was trying to do a green screen, and it didn't work, and I've got a white background. So how do I fix that? So uh, this is a video for you. Okay, so here's an example. Um, I took this footage with a drone, and I made sure that it was going to be uh, blown out. The sky was going to be blown out. And even though I tried, the zebras were going and everything, I still have a bit of the blue sky there. So we're going to have to remove that. Pretty simple to do. First thing we do is go in the color page. We've got a node. We're going to blow out the highlights. So I'm going to do that with this um, curves adjustment. I'm putting a middle spot here so that I can uh, make sure the midtones stay the same. And I just keep moving that bar at the top until the midtones look right and the highlights are blown out. All right, pretty straightforward. And of course, we always label our nodes. So that's uh, blow out the rest of the sky, blow out the sky, blow out. Sure, that works. Uh, new node, option S or Alt S on a PC. And on this one, we're going to use the Luma here. And that's just going to be to grab all that white and make it invisible. Okay, so we're going to speed things up a little bit. We're going to go to the effects panel. There's a search, type Luma, find the Luma here, drag that onto the node. Okay, look over at the left here. You see this? That might not be showing. Sometimes it's showing as this qualifier, and you need to just put it to the effects. So I just grab the little bullseye eyedropper, find some white, click on it. That's it. Now, it doesn't look like anything happened, but if you press Shift-H, you'll see which parts are grabbed and which ones are not. And in this case, it's pretty good because you can see some of the reflections, the white on the van, are showing up as well. And that's good because we're going to reflect some of the sky onto the highlights of the van later. All right, so I'm going to focus on what the Luma key is not keying out. So I'm going to create an outside node. You can do that with option O, or you can right click here, go add node, outside node. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this scene a little bit more dark because no one's gonna believe it's, uh, it's nighttime under these conditions. So um, the outside node, here I'm labeling it outside node so I can find it later. Um, that's where I'm gonna do my grade and I'll just show you. I'm going to grab the offset wheel. All right, check this out. I'm grabbing the offset wheel, turning everything red, and anything that's not part of the key turns red. That's a really good test to see whether or not you've got a good key. Um, so I can do the grade on this node, and I can do the key on the other node. And if I have to make changes to the key, it's going to change both the outside node, what's affected and what's not. So this is a pretty good uh, way of doing it. It's a lot like a green screen, except instead of green, it's white. And just like a green screen keyer, the Luma keyer has a number of uh, matte tools that you can use to finesse your Luma key. There's just a lot of little things you can do. I'm not going to go into them because they're a lot like a green screen. Play with it, you'll see how it works. Not too complicated. All right, I mentioned I was going to talk a little bit about why Luma keying is way better than green screen screening. You shoot something against the green screen, you're going to have some spill, whether it's a blue screen or a green screen, and that ends up uh, on your talent, on their clothes, and their hair, and then you're trying to like remove bits of green from their blonde hair or, or whatever, and it's it becomes a real pain in the butt. Whereas when you use a white background and you use a Luma keyer, you're essentially using the same tools. However, it's just white light, it's transparent. So it just makes it look a little shiny, and that's usually what you want anyway when you're doing a rear light um, separation. So I strongly encourage you to start using a white background and some extra lighting for your simple, I won't say do it for everything, but for your simple green screening applications, uh, white's just better. Okay, there's a blue, there's a blue box here coming out of the outside node and you're going to have to connect that to an alpha output. Um, there's already a blue box there you can see, but here I'm going to show you how to do it. You right click and you choose add alpha output and then the box will appear if it's not already there. And that's how you're going to end up making this um, mask uh, remove the, the uh, pieces and just leave you with the outcome that you want, which is a missing sky. 
All right, and uh, I've got it looking a little bit like a day for night, like I wanted. Uh, you can see the blue bar there, it's caching um, the effect, but uh, it's not finished yet. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, I'm gonna get myself a moon, and I'm going to get myself a starry background, and I'm going to stick those in, and I'm going to let it cache, and I'll show you the final. All right, so I've got myself a moon that I uh, took, took myself, actually, and uh, I gave it a little bit of yellow. I found a picture of a sky online. Um, stuck that in the background, made some modifications to it, uh, added some yellow in the blur tool to, uh, to make it look photorealistic. And you see these three things, they take a lot of uh, memory. So I'm making a duplicate by dragging Alt or Option, and I'm making a copy, and I'm going to select them and I'm going to make them disappear. You press D to make them disappear, and then I'm going to take these three and turn them into a compound, compound clip and I just call it whatever you want. It's going to be this one clip and then what we're going to do is we're going to render that in place. Um, switch it to uh, on a Mac you use Apple ProRes 444HQ it's the highest resolution and it does an alpha export. So QuickTime then go to DNX uh, and then choose the highest resolution for that. I think uh, I found it here 444 12-bit I think there's a 10-bit as well and uh, HQX 10-bit I'll get you there, uh, and I believe that'll also do an export of the alpha, which is really what you want. Now we have these uh, three clips and the uh, rendered in place clip, and what that allows you to do is it allows you to go back and work on those three clips if you need to, if you need to make adjustments, because you can't decompose a rendered in place clip. But the rendered in place clip is ready for export. It will be used in the export. So that's why we go with the highest quality. It'll look exactly like what it looks like in place in the final export. And now here's the final shot. So it's rendered. It's taken a little bit of time. It's, uh, it looks pretty decent. All done in the color page. No fusion. I hope this helped. So uh, send your questions into the forum. And uh, if something's really challenging, I'll make a video.